everybody, and welcome to Dark Angels and Pretty Freaks, episode 349. I am Neil. I'm Annalise. Hi, Annalise. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. You're <laughs> behind the monitor again. Oh, man. You're hiding out. I can only see a little portion of your... I have your... a zone I like to keep in. Well, the zone changed because I didn't move the monitor. You didn't <sighs> used to hide back there. Well, also, the puppy like keeps inching towards me, so I think I just start to inch back. Then you're out of your zone. Yeah. You get him out of his zone. He's left, and he didn't eat all of his toy, so. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we are live today on the YouTube, so if you hear us interacting with the, the chat, tubes. that's why we're doing it. It is Valentine's Day. <laughs> it's a weird day for people. Yeah. For some people, it's cool. For other mm-hmm. people, it sucks balls. If whatever camp you're in, we hope that you're good way. having uh, the best day you possibly can. Yeah. And that's all we have to say about that. <laughs> But uh, we're, we're a couple that gets together once a week and records a podcast and talks about ourselves. Mm-hmm. So we're glad you're joining us. Uh, we very much appreciate it. And um, here we go. I don't have anything else to say about that. Fine then. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so how are you? Uh, good. It's a good day. Yeah. Feel good. Good. But, it's, yeah. it's cold. Kind of cold today. It's colder than I expected it to cold be. Cold for us, And I then say. I also... Wanted it to be. Um, Brian in the chat was saying that it's frozen in Texas, so I don't. How cold is it there? I don't know what's going on. It's freezing. Some, I would say some weird snowstorms and That's whatnot. Right. <laughs> Brian says it's discount chocolate eve. That's true. <laughs> I sure hope so. <laughs> we used to get um, discounted on the days after um, Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. We used to get discounted dog treats because right. they have special Valentine's dog <laughs> treats, and then they'd all go on sale the next day. Yeah. And we'd pick them up. That hasn't we'd been bark them the all case up. recently, though. We might check tomorrow. Uh, we will check tomorrow. You but, never know. You know, they they haven't been having it, so uh, they've been keeping that shit full price. I know, <laughs> jerks. What what the hell, freaking Target? I know. Come on, man. <laughs> Put up my discount. Help a needs. dog owner out. I know. Those little mini bones are expensive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's weird how the small ones cost more than the big ones. Well, yeah. I guess it's not that weird. It makes sense, but Why I'm still not. Pardon me? Why do you think it makes sense? Because it's harder to make the small ones than the big ones. Think so? Yeah. You need more machinery. More? Just, isn't it just a stamp? Right. But you need more stamps. On some biscuits? <laughs> you, need, you need more stamps for the little ones than you do the big ones. Hmm, I suppose. But it's not a supposed thing. Mm. <laughs> it's it's simple mm. mathematics. <laughs> yes? <laughs> Are you all right? Yeah. I just, um, I just saw that. Um, is that Scarf Surf Club says hello for Mike? Scarf. <laughs> Is that Siscarif? I believe so. I can't read that. All right. Do you want to borrow the glasses? I need no, glasses. I, I didn't have a hard time <laughs> reading it. Why would I? Well, that doesn't even make any sense. I Do need, I want to I borrow need the glasses? more intense glasses. All right. Uh, also, so tell some, me, maybe some clean ones. All right. Focus <laughs> here, lady. What uh, What do you got going on? Tell, talk to me. It's Valentine's Day, and um, it's cold, and I don't like it. Yes. I want a warm Valentine's. Well, that's <laughs> weird because it's in February. And so it's not usually usually warm here in February, <laughs> or not that warm. However, yesterday was nice, and then it was... Yeah. It, today was supposed to be nicer, and it ended up being worse. Or, <laughs> you sure you're okay? Yeah. Or, I did right. a little situation. I think that I have something on my face. Do I have something on my face? Not not other than Probably what you're just supposed to have there. <laughs> Maybe it's a new freckle. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you're in a mood today. Um, It's going to be a good day. We're going to have some... Uh, Special teas pasta. Mm-hmm. And by special teas, I mean of our choice that we're going to make ourselves. <laughs> right. I'm having fancy mushroom pasta with an Alfredo garlic sauce scenario. What are you having? I'm just having garlic pasta. Mm-hmm. Garlic spicy pasta. Right. But, and garlic bread. But we bought fresh pasta. <laughs> yes, we didn't buy we like did. card, you know, the card. dried cardboard box pasta. <laughs> wow. You, what is going on with you today? I'm good. Yeah. It's a good day. All right. Are you sure? Your dog's back. Okay. <laughs> how, how, how can I get you to focus on, on what's going on here, on this recording? I just, I just got done telling you what we're doing today. Oh, no. I, I know what we're doing today. I'm part of it. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to make garlic bread. I'm going to make salad. It's going to be great. Mm-hmm. Looking mm-hmm. forward to that. I haven't eaten today. Brian says Maybe take you to Jamaica it. for Valentine's <laughs> so you can be warm. <laughs> I wish we could. I wish we could. I hopefully, wish we could. Hopefully this year. <laughs> we'll see. I just realized that I am hungry. Maybe that's why the pasta scenario came up because um, I didn't really eat today. So 
I'm hungry. Okay. <laughs> I keep forgetting that uh, the doctor said I'm supposed to have like a whole bunch of small meals a day, and I don't really do that. So no, we've talked about it before. Yes, I know. it does. It it concerns me because as as we get older, mm-hmm. um, you, you don't seem to um, follow what the doctors say to keep you healthier, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm afraid. Right. Uh, and I mean, it could happen to either of us, but mm-hmm. I'm, af- I'm afraid that all of a sudden you're going to hit a wall and then you're not going to be able to do anything because you're going to be all old in one meal a day. <laughs> Decrepit? <laughs> yeah. You'll be all broken. Um, I, I hope that's not the case. Um, I just need to plan my meals better. I need to uh, figure something out so I have more ready available food scenarios throughout the day. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I need to do that. Maybe. Right. <laughs> so do that. All right. Well, good. As long as well, now it's all fixed. Now yeah. we all know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So just do that. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of peanut butter smells in here. <laughs> oh my god! You're killing me. <laughs> Wait, am I just being too random for you? I. I, yeah, I I'm still. Yeah. I, I'm not exactly sure what's going on. I don't know. Well, that, I know. Do you want to come back to Valentine's Day? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I, I know. thought. Okay. Do you have anything you want to talk about? I have lots of things. All right. Well, why don't we get to one of them? Mm, Let's talk about NASCAR then. Okay. Go ahead. So NASCAR is back. Daytona is this weekend and it's currently- It's actually today. Today. Mm -hmm. And I was going to say it's currently on, but not really because they're in a rain delay after a huge wreck in the first, what is it? The 14th lap or something like that? It was early. I don't know exactly. And um, it's a 200 race lap race, excuse me. And- um, I don't know if it's going to happen today. Right. I know we've got a lot of day to go, but. Yes. <laughs> We're recording it just in case. Yes. So we'll see. But I'm excited about it and it's pretty fun and I'm happy it's back. What are oh, your thoughts? Uh, on NASCAR? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, uh, it, it's, um, I, I do enjoy NASCAR. It, it, it is, it's kind of, it's still a little weird because they don't have like the same regular amount of people Mm -hmm. and crowds. So things are still a little kind of weird. And then it's also been weird. The one thing that's a pain in the neck with NASCAR is when there is rain delays, because it kind of takes away from, I mean, it's already, it can be a little bit of a boring sport sometimes. (laughs) So when you also have rain delays and then they can't do certain qualifying and this doesn't happen Mm -hmm. and that doesn't happen, it can be a little bit of a, of a drag, especially on the, like the first and this, you know, the Daytona is considered like their biggest race of the year, which always is weird to me that it's the first race of the mm-hmm. year. But it, it, so it can be a little bit like, oh, rain delay. Like, how long do I have to sit around and wait for this freaking thing? <laughs> I think what they should do is they should cover all the NASCAR tracks so there's no more rain delays. Put hmm. roofs over everything. <laughs> like, I think, I think it would be, I Isn't think it, it would be a little be, bit too big for that. No, nah, it's just money. They can make them solar panels. <laughs> and then they can race whenever they want. It would be no problem. Well, that's true. I think, I think this is the way. You know what? I say they put all the tracks inside buildings, mm-hmm. climate controlled. Mm-hmm. No problem. Mm-hmm. No We're problem. set. Yeah. You know what they can do is they can make the cars a lot smaller, make the track smaller, and put them indoors. Well, if they don't have the audiences, it doesn't be near as big either. They could go fully. <laughs> you know what? Why don't we just cancel real NASCAR and just go iRacing racing all the there time? There you go. Well, that's it. A lot of people like that, so it is. Yeah, <laughs> we wouldn't have these freaking rain delays. No, but I, I mean, it is. I do enjoy having it on, and this week is fun because there's so much racing all at once. Because mm-hmm. they have all these other these races yeah, that don't spin make something every day that don't really matter or make any sense, but they do them anyway. Yeah, so it's enjoyable. I Last enjoy night's. It. Last night's race um, was somewhat enjoyable. Mm-hmm. The Xfinity. Yeah. The trucks were okay. Yeah. I'm glad it's back. Lots of wrecks. I'm glad uh, <laughs> Bubba's got a new team with mm-hmm. Michael Jordan and Denny Hamlin. That's very exciting. It's very interesting. Pitbull is part owner of a team now. It's kind of neat. <laughs> Things are happening. Things are Stuff happening. Is happening. <laughs> Mike said, I think Neil just invented go-karting. Exactly. That's, pretty much, that's what that's I want. That's pretty much true, It's right? like Malibu Grand Prix of what we have had. I don't know if it's still around <laughs> out here. That's not, that's what it is. I'd like to see these racers go around. Um, Kim was just saying it's lap 15, 16 cars affected. Yep. Mm-hmm. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I they knew it, it was around there. They made it to lap 15, there. Start, cars exploded, yep. started raining, 
they all got out of their cars and went to their <laughs> RVs. Great sport. I love it. Life from my I would, RV. <laughs> I would like it if like they did this in football. Like mm-hmm. just, you know, second down, they're like, meh. We're you know what? We're gonna go it's to our snowing. RVs. I'm gonna wait. Oh, we'll see you later. Put a pause on that. They, yeah. we, I'll I'll see you later. Yeah. But yeah, but but it is it, it I mean it we'll see how the it's fun season that it's goes. Back. Yeah. yeah. Um how do you feel about crowds or lack thereof? I it doesn't bother me to not have a crowd, to be completely honest, but I I like the crowds. I, I know I that they adds. like the crowd as well. I think and you're obviously they about I know, me. I'm just saying oh. that I it doesn't bother me, but you know. Yeah, I, I like the crowds. I like seeing the crowds there. I it makes me happy to see crowds at sporting events because a, a lot of times it's a somewhat of a family thing. Mm-hmm. Usually it's uh the kids are involved somehow. I mean, I know obviously not when I go to sporting events. Not that I go to a bunch, <laughs> but no kids involved right. with me. So it I I also think it adds that there's something the the energy just mm-hmm. know the energy is a little bit different. You can hear it. Uh, I know they pipe crowd noise in for football this year and and baseball and um, basketball and NASCAR too. But there's just some you can just you know there's something about it even watching it on TV. So I'm glad that there'll be more crowds uh, this year and hopefully as the year goes on and more vaccines and all that the crowds will get bigger and. Hopefully we'll be back to capacity at some point. I do think um, people that are able to get back to work, I think it might help a lot of these some uh, a lot of these sports and live events because I think people are going to be really wanting to go do stuff since they've mm-hmm. been cooped in their house for a year. Right. So it'll be. I mean, it's nice that those things are still there for them for people to be able to do that. Right. But I, I think they have like 30,000 people today at right, NASA. Total. They have quite a bit. Right. Yeah. Which is cool. And they're doing their best with the social distancing and all of that. But I also think there is a, a point where people have just had enough and they're like, yeah. If I die after the NASCAR race, that's fine. I just want to go do something at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know what? I'm tired of my kids. Right. So I'm going to take them to a NASCAR race. Right. Freaking Zoom and all of this. Yeah, I think there's just it, a lot of people rolling to the, the dice. For, you know, <laughs> freaking kids not doing their homework when they're supposed to and they've been inside all, you know, we're going to go. At least it's outdoor. Right. And now it's raining, so. Well, I also think that, as you say, the um, the drivers and athletes themselves um, like to be cheered on. There's an aspect to that that they miss very much. And so, and of course it's fun. Like we've been, to, you know, sporting events in our lifetime and that's always a fun a live event so yeah um, <clears throat> I'm, the one thing about like these events and stuff that i'm curious about how they handle is the bathrooms right. like I, I get everything else you know food and like do and they have an attendant that's you just can, in there wiping you can everything be down? somewhat distant in the stands and all this but i'm just curious like because mm-hmm. when you gotta go you gotta go right and if anyone's ever really 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 had a pee it the, the person next to you could be uh, a leper i don't know if that's a thing anymore. Uh, I don't even know if leprosy is contagious, but let's just say it is. Uh, and you'll, that's fine. You'll pee next to them. Right. You're like, I'm good. Right. If, if I've offended any lepers, just know that I did have you peeing at an NASCAR event. So I can't be that bad. <laughs> we didn't pre-research this just so you know. <laughs> no. And even if we did, I would have got it wrong. So it really right. doesn't matter. Right. Um, no, I get that. I get that. I just like, as you say, I hope they, are doing protocols and all that because, and they'd have, they'd have to be, I mean, there's no way that the spotlight would be on them and having people in the stands again and have them not being as safe as they can be. Well, they were so. the, I believe they were the first professional sport back. Right. And they did it really, really well. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, and, uh, they also don't, you know, you don't want to get your fan base sick. Right. Or have any negative publicity. So absolutely. Absolutely. They want, I they would, want to be known for being the first back and doing it safely. Yeah, and I, and I also think that now that there's so many things in place from the time that people leave their houses to the time they get back after the event, meaning if they go and get something to eat or if they have to get gas and this and that, right. and with you know different states having different masks and this and that, it's not like it was in the beginning where everything was willy-nilly. So there's a lot right. of safety going from the time they people leave the house to the time they come back, take, taking out what's going on at the track, which helps. Right. So. If for some reason something were to happen, a lot of spread isn't happening. So, right. uh, well, like we were talking about last week a little bit, um, I like to think that moving forward, um, some protocols will stay in place. Like if you're sick, maybe wear a mask while you're out, and then like 
um, businesses, sporting events, whatever it may be, providing like um, hand sanitizer at the front door in the bathrooms or something like that. That's awesome. Like that's, I think that's something I would love to see just continuing. And then like, and like, I think that from this point forward, I would like, you know, I want to carry like hand sanitizer and things like that with me. And, you know, it just makes sense to do that because it's easy to do and it makes a huge difference. So why wouldn't you do it? You know? So. I mean, the thing I'm going to take is I'm hoping to see the least amount of people possible for the rest of my life. (laughs) (laughs) I just hope I don't have to really go anywhere anymore. I mean, you really hope this gets us out of a lot of, Oh, for the next three years, obligations. It's just going to be like, Oh, Christmas party. I'm, you know Mm. what? I'm just not ready. Yeah. It just, I know things are okay. Not feeling a hundred percent. But I just don't feel comfortable. You never know. I think, I think you're dirty people and I don't want to go to your house. That's going to be, um, that, that's really my goal. (laughs) So uh, yeah, I'll be using. Oh oh, is it, oh is this the St. Patrick's Day parade downtown? Uh, no, yeah, I'm sorry, no. I'm not going to meet you. That's oh, are you no. are you playing? Is your band playing? No, yeah, no, that's that's great. Um, I can't remember who it was, but I think it was the Two on Three podcast. Where they they were talking about on a few episodes ago about like like what what are you willing to risk it for right right now? Is it like family barbecue? Because a lot of people seem to be risking it for that. Like if there's like that one band you've always wanted to see if they were playing, would you risk it for that? And I'm like, no. No, I wouldn't. Yeah. I, it's not worth it. Like, like you have to give up like a year of like doing a whole bunch of stuff. That's a luxury to. Yeah. If I didn't risk it to go to Jamaica, I'm not going to risk it for yeah Christmas Eve. Right. For sure. I mean, come on. Come on, man. Yeah. Um, Mike was saying title of the episode, Leprosy NASCAR. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> you never know. Could be. But uh, yeah, there's not much I would risk it for. I mean- as we've come so far, we've been doing this for so long that why, why, why risk it now? Like why throw it down? Like you just can't take it anymore. Like well, we're so close. I, yeah. We're so close. Come and, on. And just there's hang, more, tight, people. more that tight. is happening. So I think there's a little you know? bit of, but again, right. you're locked in the house with three kids that are, right. you're trying to teach yeah. over zoom. I can see where it's like, Maybe okay, you that's, just lose your shit someday, that's yeah. been enough. Mm-hmm. Let's take them to the track. In fact, let's throw them on the track. <laughs> like just slow down to 20 while and drop the them off. cars are, are going around in circles. <laughs> Um, speaking of all of that, your parents are scheduled to get vaccinated. Well, I don't know if your dad is, but your mom is. <laughs> uh, yes. T- Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. 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 It's Shot interesting number one, how so many, great. how many people now, you know, you know, first hear the vaccines are coming out and then you hear people are getting it. Now it's like, oh, people I know, I've yeah. got friends We've, that have it, It's vaccinated, finally trickled down to people, you know. Yeah. Which is cool. Right. I freaking. Well, I know a couple people at work have been vaccinated. And, uh, so now that I, and I've been on your mom of like, mom, when you, when, mom. yeah, Get when you schedule it, yeah, no way <laughs> she likes it. <laughs> when are you doing it? What's going on? And she's on it. So that's great. Yeah. And she really wants to get back to like seeing people and doing stuff. So she's on top of the situation. As sure. long as it's not us, that's fine. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, is it your birthday mom? Sorry. You no. know, I'm not mm. feeling 100% <sighs> not ready. about this whole thing. <laughs> um, but as we, t- it, yeah, so. So that's my feeling on NASCAR. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> the dogs are going crazy. Well, they've been, oh, okay. The big one's chasing the little one. They're running back and forth through the house and they're wrestling on the bed and then running back to the living room. And yeah, it's a whole oh, thing. Oh, they're adorable. They're adorable. And they're huge. Mm-hmm. Our, our puppy is getting a lot bigger. Like we, at first we're joking about how he didn't seem to be getting bigger, but just like all of a sudden he's like 15 more pounds. Whoa. Okay. That's someone, someone out. slid out. <laughs> <laughs> but um yes he's I think getting, it might be over fifty pounds now. Yeah. I think he's getting closer to zero size, which was sixty. Oh, I think pounds. he's bigger. Oh, oh, weight wise. Well yeah, he's, he's tall. He's getting yeah. taller for sure. But yeah, uh, I don't yeah. I think zero is sixty five. Little need, ball of muscle. Yeah. <laughs> the little corpuscle muscle. <laughs> Not this one though. Quattro is kinda soft and squishy. He's a squi- he's a he's squishy, a squishy little dog. Still yeah. squishy. He has a lot of, extra, a lot of skin. extra skin and fur and <laughs> yeah. He's, Maybe he's going to grow into that. I don't know. I don't know how that works. I but. Don't, yeah. He reminds me of uh, it, like he's wearing an Egger suit. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. He's wearing an Egger suit. That's yeah. funny. Oh, I love that movie. Um, you know, something weird that happens to me. Mm. I wanted to bring this up. When I go to the bathroom, oh. my nose runs. Um, I assume when you, when you mean you're going more than poop. Um, what? <laughs> I don't know how much more. What, what do you do I in there? I meant more than pee as in your pooping and your nose runs when you poop is what you're trying to say. Yes. When I'm sitting on the toilet, mm. my nose starts running. That's interesting. Well, no, I can just be peeing because I'm a, I'm a 
pee sitter. I'm right, but you're not in there for long enough, really. So. Sometimes. Sometimes it just trickles out. <laughs> okay. just need to take my time. Uh, yeah, but my nose runs. Mm. I don't understand if there's a correlation. Like, why would that happen? I don't know. Uh, my nose always gets runny when I'm exercising. Not that that would create the same physical yeah, not, response for you. Yeah. But um, I don't... I mean, I'm not in there I don't know. deadlifts Do you think it's psychological? I, no, my nose is really running. I know, but you know what I mean. Like oh, a, I don't know. I, I, I don't. It's not like I'm thinking my nose is going to run. Um, I don't think of it until it starts running. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, but it it's it is a maybe very, just you just like release your muscles, relax, and all the fluids start to flow. <laughs> maybe <laughs> Brian says my body's equalizing pressure. <laughs> there you go. That's through my that, through oh. my snot. Yeah. Why not? That's interesting. It's no wait. It's a theory. Yeah, I mean. It, it's it's did not you, like a you, volcano. <laughs> it's not like you know things are. Did you evacuated. Google Doctor that one? No, I did not. I was just thinking. <laughs> I'm surprised. About it. No, I was just thinking about it. <laughs> that's pretty funny. And I thought that's just an interesting thing. Um, I want to talk about a couple more things, like the TV show we're currently watching, and um, your stuff from Trader Joe's. Okay. We'll what do you want to talk about? I don't know what you got on there. I can't tell. We can talk about my stuff for you. You bought me um, some Valentine's mm-hmm. Day gifts right. from Trader Joe's. Is that what we're talking yeah, about? Yeah. From Trader Joe's. You got me a bunch of chocolate bars. I did. <laughs> a whole bunch of chocolate <laughs> a bunch bars. Of dark chocolate because that's better for um, sugar intake and things like that. And you chocolate? also like dark chocolate. I, I do. I, for one, do not really, for the most part, um, like my chocolate very dark. I like it. More medium. <laughs> medium chocolate. Medium to light dark. <laughs> I am I am a fan of, of dark chocolate. And, and so, yeah, I, I just um, got a sampler, if you will, like maybe mm, seven dark yeah. chocolate bars of different brands and varieties. Yeah. And so I've, I've tried one and then I ate a whole one yet last night, <laughs> <laughs> which was delicious. Delightful. The, the one last night was a little bit more, uh, what is the word, like more... Normal candy, right? It right. It was only seventy five percent cacao, cacao with caramel in, in it, uh, caramel Liquid and caramel. Uh, yeah. sea salt. So yeah. it was almost like a, a high quality Carmelo, <laughs> right? With right. Salt. And I think I only got you like one of those. The rest are fairly dark. There's one that's called um, Midnight or something like mm-hmm. that. Like you'll see it, but um, anyway, but they're so, very tasty. Yeah. It was a very nice Valentine's Day <laughs> gift. And you like your sweets, so and uh, you've I been do. trying to be really good with your sweets, so I was trying to think of something that um, you could just have like a few pieces of, and it would satisfy the sweet Last tooth. night I had all the pieces. Yes. Well, there, like I said, there was the one, so you know. <laughs> so you could have a few pieces and then be satisfied, satiated, if you will. Yes. Satiated. I don't think I um, opened the dog run door. Did you open the dog run door today? This morning? Um... No wonder there. Oh, I don't think so. That's all right. They'll, they'll but that, the, I mean, that door's been open. Yeah, no, they can go around. Yeah. Just yeah. kind of funny. <laughs> that why they can't, why I they're not Quattro, running around. Yeah, Quattro yeah. ran out there and he's like, ah, I can't get yeah, through. Yeah, right. He's like, oh shit, yeah. I'm stuck. So Brian's in the milk chocolate club. Yeah, I'm in the milk chocolate club myself. Um, but what I really was leaning that conversation towards was mm-hmm. the the whiskey beverage. Oh, yes. Which I found um, really kind of cool. And I'd never seen it before. It's the Trader Joe's Whiskey Sour Pre-Made Cocktail. Pre-Made Cocktail. And um, if you guys are regular listeners, you know that we um, have been members of, or not currently members, but have been members of the Napa Distillery Club. And they do a lot of pre-made cocktails that are really good and fun. And since it's a boutique distillery, they tend to be a little pricey, they're although they're really expensive. good. They're yeah. really good, though. But ridiculously expensive. Yes. And, but they do discounts and club prices and things like that. But anyway, um, Trader Joe's has started this um, their version, and the bottle I got was half the price and twice as much. <laughs> So I saw that and I just, you know, was thinking, well, why not? Let's give that a shot. And you really like it. It was really good. So we can, we can recommend that. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. It's interesting with a lot of the pre-made cocktails and they're doing them much better. It's not like the old cans of club (laughs) censored on the beach. Um, Gross. A lot of the, a lot of those pre-made cocktails will oftentimes be like too sweet or, Mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. they will have like essence of the flavor instead of like right. actual mint essence and of liquor <laughs> it'll always taste super fake but mm-hmm. um companies have been getting really good and the trader joe's whiskey sour one if you are a fan of a whiskey sour really or i shouldn't say was is really good mm-hmm. very um, i smelled it you had me you know smell it and taste it and it very much tasted like and smelled like it should right you know like a like a legit cocktail like it's <clears> like 
I would not be surprised if you were served that cocktail. It didn't so. smell like a like a plastic version of a cocktail. Right. Which sometimes right. It didn't sm- it didn't smell like a weird strawberry shortcake plastic sugar version of a, what a cocktail should be. It was good, <laughs> very good. I very so, much enjoyed it. Yeah, well, awesome. Yeah, but uh, I just wanted to talk about that because I think that's cool for other people to know. Like it's it's great. I, for I other really people like to know. Trader Joe's. So I sometimes like Trader Joe's. It's sometimes fun. I don't. <laughs> And I got us Hi, some um, frozen yummy things to have Hi. in the future. Not today, but Go play sometime with down the line. <laughs> right, you guys can see boy. puppy attack. Puppy attack. Hi, big boy. All right. <laughs> Go play with nine. Good yeah, boy. Kim was just saying that some of those cocktails are sugar bombs. Exactly. Yeah. But this one actually is pretty good. So, Right. And the ingredients are good. Like yeah. They actually used cane sugar like cane for sugar, a little right. bit of sugar that it needed. Right. Yeah. A lot of those, they just end up tasting Right. And it's, I mean, you can sweet. smell the alcohol in this one. So it's a legit like cocktail. It's mm-hmm. not just a, you know. Yeah. So it tasted, no, it was very good. Awesome. Very nice. And you said it wasn't super expensive. It was like $15, I think, it's for the, the regular size bottle, which is a regular size of a liquor bottle. It's the 750 milliliters. Yeah. Right. Sorry if you, there's bouncing in there. Dogs are playing under the table. <laughs> oh, happy puppies. <laughs> anyway, so yay. That So that, I mean, I feel like a win, like a solid, a solid V-Day scenario of of good things. Solid V days. That's what we're <laughs> solid after. Solid V-Day. We want a solid V-Day. We don't want a liquid V-Day. Nope. We don't want a gaseous V-Day. We want <laughs> sure don't. solid V all day. All day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Oh my gosh! Did you guys hear the squeak? Oh my gosh! Kim said hi, Quattro. Oh, he's over here now. I think someone got bit. Um, anyway. My sister sent me this weird um, video message, or like, yeah, video of mm-hmm. her, where she um, read me a on Valentine's Day, like today. No, last night, okay. late last night, because I didn't see it till this morning, okay. and then I was running around this morning to go ride, so I didn't actually watch it until after my ride. But it was like a poem, like a rhyming poem about um, was she trying to giving a blowjob. <laughs> Your sister's so weird. Yeah. You guys are so weird together. <laughs> and it was, <laughs> and so Kaylin, her husband was recording it. And so you can hear him cracking up. I mean, it was, <laughs> the thing is ridiculous. I will have to transpose it and we, we'll read it um, out. Before, I think but you it should. was ridiculous. It was hilarious. You need to like, yeah, you she need to like, so like lyrics. You need to read it like a lyric. She had a little bit to drink. Clearly. And she was having Clearly. the time of her life reading it. But it is, it, I can't tell if it was written by like a 14 year old or right. what, but it's hilarious. Ha- and your sister is now 37? Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but it was, no, she's almost 40. We're, we're going to be 49. 38. She's going to be 39. She's 10 years younger. So it, <laughs> <laughs> Go do dog stuff outside. No, don't bite that. Puppy faces. Uh, but it, yeah, it was. I'm like, we were hanging out, having dinner, having drinks, and I'm. I guess I don't. I want to know where it came. I haven't heard from her today, but I want to know where the whole mm-hmm. poem came from because it looked like she was reading it off. They were a piece clearly of having a nice Saturday night val- V day. <laughs> yeah, pre pre Valentine's Day. It um it looked like they were. Um, oh my gosh! Like she had a piece of binder paper that was written on. So she wrote it herself or I she, don't know. That's she, the thing. I, I, how many people we, actually we, write we on need, binder paper? We need an update next week of the scenario because it was, what the frack. It was hilarious. That's crazy. Uh, typical Mornings is heading to Reno. Oh, hi. Nice. Awesome. We want to go back to Reno, hopefully sooner rather than later. <laughs> but when it's fun to go. I don't want to go with rules. <laughs> no rules in Reno, baby. No rules Reno, man. <laughs> well, I hope you have a good time and I hope uh, things are cool there. I hey. don't know what's going on there. Bebe. Are you Speaking gonna of, hey, stay? At, they said they watched the El Dorado review. Did you? Are you gonna stay there? Where are you staying? Well, All hey. that stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I have questions. I'd like to live I vicariously through other Reno people right now. Recently, a new podcast that I wanted mm. to talk about real quick. It is not a. It is not really an independent podcast. However, I'm enjoying it. It's mm-hmm. called Off Menu with James A. Caster and Ed Gamble. Mm-hmm. Who's Ed Gamble? Another comedian. You you would okay. know him if you saw if him. If I saw him, yeah. right. Um, and so the podcast, they have a guest on every week, and they call it the Dream Restaurant, and the guest gets to choose their ultimate meal. Like, they can have, and, and they can say, like, oh, I'd want this steak that so-and-so cooked me from, you know, blah, okay. blah, blah. Right. You know, they don't have to make something up. It can be whatever, and, and, like, it starts with, do you want still or sparkling water? And you get to pick your... 
your entree, your main course, your dessert, your beverage, and you know, bread or papadoms. That's the big, big question. But it's really funny because as um, whoever the guest is, whether it's you know a musician, actor, comedian, friend, whoever, um, it opens up to a really neat conversation of like why they would pick that, mm-hmm. and like some people will pick their meal and it won't necessarily like everything won't necessarily go together, but they're like, Hey, I can pick whatever I want. And I really, really liked this starter from this thing. That's not going to go with this other thing. Um, so it's, it's a, it's a fun podcast and they, and it, it's obviously very lighthearted and, you know, but it's very, very enjoyable. And they, the, the two hosts, uh, Ed and James are willing to give like, their opinions and like call people out like why why would you do that and then they'll ask questions like that sounds gross or something yeah they'll ask questions <laughs> about uh like as things go along like if somebody they, they're just they do it really well mm-hmm. they just done does it make you hungry um not really because okay. it's really more about the conversation right and some people want stories stuff, come from yeah, what they're talking and about, some people right? want stuff that like that doesn't I appeal to you right. i wouldn't eat but it's um it's pretty good so i would say check it out off menu <laughs> with James A. Caster and Ed Gamble. A lot of fun. Yay. That's all I wanted I to say. I still haven't listened to that Cup the Froth podcast. I, I keep forgetting because, like I said, I, I don't use the Apple uh, podcast app, and so I can't listen to there. And they're not on Stitcher, right? Right. So, Which is weird. Right. And so the only way I can really listen to them without downloading or activating my Apple podcast app is um, on Facebook. And... I don't really have the opportunity to like stream Facebook while I'm at work right? or through like while I'm commuting to work, which is where I mostly listen to podcasts. So I haven't really been able to listen to them yet. So yeah, they're fun. I, but think, I think at some point I'll I think you'll, deep you dive. would like the off right. menu. Have mm-hmm. you listened to that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you would enjoy that. It's pretty, right. pretty funny. <laughs> pretty good. Just I'm listening that. to audiobooks, and I figured out I've been working in a machine room by myself. And then I finally, it finally dawned on me to um, use the adapters that you bought for me mm-hmm. and um so i set up my audiobook and a speaker in the corner and hook it to my phone and just turn on the libby app and have my book going and shut the door to the machine room i'm working in by myself and just bada boom bada listen, bing. listen to books <laughs> there you go i like it since we're on books do you did you listen to anything new this week um i finished something this right. week um it's called the Christy Curse by Victoria Abbott. <clears throat> and it's the first in a series. And I liked it so much. I've already put the second book on hold. Oh. Ding dong. Ooh, hello. Someone's at the door. Oh, Ooh. hello. <laughs> That's someone's hilarious. At the door. <laughs> <laughs> Our ring doorbell's talking to us. Um, but it's another one of my cozy mystery books. And um, it's about a girl who gets a job for in her hometown in um, like upstate New York. And, um, she gets a job as a researcher after she graduated from college. And uh, it's kind of like trying to find um, and acquire um, rare books and things like that for this oh, older, yeah, I think old, you, you older mentioned rich it a lady. Last week, right? Maybe I mentioned, I, mean, I don't know if I mentioned it or okay. not, but this is, it sounds familiar. but it's very, it's, a lot of them are very familiar. Cause I was going to, I was going to mention that one of the, one of the series of books that I had listened to, it was an ex- Magellan billet um, agent who bought a bookstore in Brussels. Oh, so the last one I talked about last week was the girl who moved to Scotland to work at a bookstore in Scotland. Oh, okay. There so, but but again, they're all similar. But anyway, authors my, in their bookstores. I mean, <laughs> I come know. on. People. But um, but what? But I'm just saying that I I like this one and I liked it enough to already get the second one. And um, had we talked about last week also about how like sometimes I don't like when they make um, they don't I don't want to say weak, but make the heroine weak. Oh but yeah, like, you were saying that doesn't stand up for herself or lets people push her around and stuff mm-hmm. like that. That's not the case in this one, and she's not overtly like. No one likes weak heroin. <laughs> we need some strong heroin. Um, anyway, so I liked it enough <laughs> that, um, and I liked that aspect of it. Like it didn't that nothing really bugged me about it, and so it's good. Cool. And um, I already have the second one. And uh, do you want to talk about your books before we talk about narrators? 
Oh, sure. I finished <laughs> uh, the You'll Never Believe What Happened to Lacey book by Amber Ruffin and oh, yeah, right. Lacey Lamar, you, you, which was good. Right, you started that last week. So. And then I also listened to Jack and Jill by James Patterson. Mm-hmm. And I am now listening to The Fifth Witness by Michael Connolly. Nice. There you go. <laughs> so narrators, yes. Um, so our our friend Super Ninja brought up um, narrators in a private conversation we were having. So it just made me want to talk about um, and ask people who do listen to audiobooks. And it's been it's been something interesting that we've talked about that um, if you don't like the narrator of a book, do you stop listening to the book? because it bugs you so much or do you continue because you're interested in the book anyway and what bugs you about narrators like and I've told you this off podcast before where I always have this problem because like um, when you were listening to someone talk I think that in your head you get an image of what that person is like Mm -hmm. and so when meaning the narrator or the narrator or the person that is in the book right so well both but separately. And so like when you hear someone's voice, like if it's over the phone, like you're talking to someone on the phone in your head, you kind of think whether you mean to or not, like your mind just kind of comes up with a scenario of what this person is like and maybe what oh, they your look like. judgments because of the sound of their voice. Right. Right. That's what I mean. So, so like when I'm listening to a book and I'm listening to like these uh, cozy mysteries and um, not this book I just listened to in particular, so so not that one. But there's another book series I listened to that the um, lead character is supposed to be kind of a young-ish girl, a a woman in her 20s-ish, like upper 20s. And um, and she's single and all these other things. That doesn't matter. The point is, is that whoever reads it has a very kind of deeper, gravelly, Kind the of person was, who does read it. The, the, the person who reads it, okay. the narrator of the audiobook version of this book series. And it takes me out of it because the person, to me, in my interpretation of this person's voice, sounds like... It doesn't fit what you right, think the a person... Right, a 50-year-old smoker would sound like. Mm-hmm. To, to me. She may not be. She may be 25 and a non-smoker. But to me... And not all 50-year-old smokers sound the same. Absolutely. I'm just saying, like, that's the image Your that preconceived, instant, right. instantly pops into my head when I hear this person speaking. Mm-hmm. And so it takes me a little bit out of the book because it's supposed to be about this 26-year-old um, pastry chef. Mm-hmm. And it I'm just like, doesn't, it doesn't, the voice doesn't fit the character. And I know it happens a lot. I'm curious how much authors have a say. I would imagine they have some because it's their... Stuff I know I was I forget what series I was listening to, and the first book was the the person who was reading it sounded like a um, like a stereotypical like New York mob boss, mm-hmm. and it just didn't work for me how the book was going. But I really liked the book, so I kept listening. And then that person wasn't the narrator for the rest of the series, so I don't mm. know if something happened or you know they, the the narrator could said I, I don't want to do it anymore, right? Um, but it, it's, I'm curious how much the author gets to say. Cause it sets the tone, whether you want it to or not, your preconceptions of what that person sounds like kind of sets your tone for, mm-hmm. you know, listening to the book. And, um, that's, I, I don't know exactly how much every author has input in, but I, you know, I like to think they have some input, but you never know. Maybe it depends on what deal you have. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, sure. I would imagine if you're a, well, I don't know, but right. it, it would seem that if you're a newer author, you're probably just happy to have your your book on audio book for other people to right, listen right. to. Probably if you're established, you might have a little bit more of a say. Um, uh, Ninja says, from what I've heard experience, authors get to weigh in on some auditions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I think that also like... Um, Which really, I, have you had the thing happen where... Um, the person who reads one, like I've, I've listened to one series read by a certain person and they're also the yes. person who reads a, yes. another I've, series. Only once, but I recognize it instantly. And yes, it's, that's right. always a little weird because mm-hmm. all of a sudden I'm like, oh, now I'm thinking of these characters uh-huh. as those last characters. Right. But fortunately it was, um, it was a really good narrator mm-hmm. if that's what they're called. Right book reader person. So it, um, it worked, but it was weird because they're, 
when it's just their, I guess, regular voice, when they're not doing the voices of the characters, it was so much the same in both books, mm-hmm. but both books took place in such different places World, and different yeah. times that it was, it was just a little awkward, but whatever. Well, I, I, I'm also being too lazy, uh, to read. <laughs> so what am I bitching about? Um, I like, I, well, I like the audiobook format because I like being read to and being able to enjoy the story while driving you know, for example, but I know I mentioned it on the podcast before, but I know it's been a long time, but for example, the Harry Potter books are read by, read by a, an amazing narrator. And I, there, I, I know that he's won an award for being a narrator. So there is clearly some sort of award oh, they, yeah, scenario for, sure, for doing that. Yeah. And it's, it's amazing. Like yeah. even, um, if you don't listen to a lot of audiobooks, or you're not even that interested in the Harry Potter books, but like listening to that narrator, read you Harry Potter books mm-hmm. is amazing. And, um, <clears throat> and like, I mean, what's really cool is when you come across like the American gods mm-hmm. audiobook. it's a full cast reading. Right. right so right. there are a bunch of different, I mean, and that was, right. that's always, that's fun. That's always nice. Um, I think I, I also, I don't know if I Stephen talked Fry about. Stephen Fry did the Harry Potter books. Well, you know, I don't know that he did. And then somebody else said Jim Dale. So there's, um, yeah. So Jim that, Dale, isn't that there's Dick two, Dale's brother? <laughs> <what's that? laughs> um, there's two different versions of um, the audiobooks. So I know that Stephen Fry did one, but there is a narrator who's a professional narrator who did another one. And that's the one I listened to. I haven't listened to the Stephen Fry ones. Um I'd like to though. Mm -hmm. Um, Anyway, so I know that I've talked to you about this off podcast. I don't remember if we talked about on the podcast or not, but um, I like anime. I watch a lot of anime Mm -hmm. and um, I don't, I can't always, I I like to, um, you know, read the subtitles and have it in the original Japanese, but I can't always do that because a lot of times when I'm watching that stuff, I'm multitasking. And so I can't stare at the screen and read the subtitles. Right. So I do listen to the American um, versions um, often and for a long time, a lot of the voice actors that would do um, the voiceovers for Japanese anime content were the same like set of seven people. And they um, work at a studio in Atlanta. And especially if you, they were doing it for um, a studio from ADV Studios, beside the point. Um, but they were like, so when you would listen or watch anime, it was like these seven people doing all the characters for whatever anime you're watching for like, like for like years. Right. And it totally takes you out of it because you recognize their voices instantly. Right. And you're like, come on, there has to be other voiceover actors out there besides these seven people that all work at this one studio in Atlanta and just keep doing the same voices over and over and over again. And it it drove me nuts. It literally drove me nuts. (laughs) It's always, anime is a very interesting thing to me for a couple of reasons. Sometimes, like the way that they're narrated, or or um, well, I should I guess the way that they're when that they do it from Japanese or whatever. The interpretation is different. yeah, and right. it's so over the top, yeah. excited, and I'm right. I'm like, it, there doesn't feel like right. a natural conversation <laughs> at all. Right, there's a lot of screaming and, I'm like, and yelling, and I'm curious. I, yeah. like I'd like to know, I'd like to understand it in the native language to right. see if that's the way it's done. Also, I, it, it is different. Like when you watch it in Japanese and you just read it, the it's different. The vibe and feeling is different. Yeah, because what I mean, I've watched a few, not a ton, but I've watched some, and when mm-hmm. most of the ones that I watched before we met were in Japanese with subtitles. Right. And it just sounded right. Right. <laughs> and then when it I sounds hear correct, it, when I that's hear what it's it in meant to be. English, right. it's just so over the top. Right. Not all of it. I mean, the ones no, I've seen, right. obviously. And then obviously, like, um, bigger studios um, do it better, you know? So, and so I'm just assuming There's very that, little nuance. Yeah. <laughs> well, again, it's like, you know... I almost expect to be like... Like, if, if, the, if the direction says, like, oh, he, he sighs loudly... I'm almost expecting them to go, and I'm sighing loudly. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> gotcha. Right. Well, yeah. So I, it definitely takes you out of it. Um, but obviously, they're being directed to do that. Right. Totally. You know? I mean, but the, it's, it's an American director of the interpretation. Anyway, so Who knows? but let's get back to the original. So yeah. you have lis- you have stopped listening to a book because the narrator bugged you so much, and that's the one you're referring to. I didn't stop. You didn't stop. I didn't. Stop. Okay. No, I've never. I've never stopped. I've. I wanted to. Mm-hmm. 
but I did really want to also, um, this was when I was newer. I mean, I've, I've listened to a few audio books here and there. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was also newer in my audio book <laughs> repertoire. <laughs> so I'm like, I guess, I guess I'm just Journey, stuck, stuck with this. And I would, and I knew right. I wanted to read the other, the whole series or mm-hmm. listen to the whole series. And I'm like, well, if that's the worst part about right. it, it's only happened to me once. There was only, and, and now I totally can't remember what book it is now, but I'll think of it later, of course, when we're not recording. But there was one book that I listened to and I, I just couldn't. I'm just like, I can't because yeah. you're taking me so far out of like your voice doesn't match the character and the cadence is weird to me and I don't like it. And so I'm also not a big fan of that stereotypical New York mob boss way accent. of talking yeah. anyway. So, mm-hmm. and it's not necessarily like if you call it a New York accent, that, that doesn't bother me. Right. But it's just that again, over the top mob boss is yeah. what you think a mob boss should sound like. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, so, but whatever he was gone or she, <laughs> I think it was a he, it sounded like a he, but I can't right. be sure was gone the next book. And, right. and it was funny and you continue on is it, it went totally from New York mob boss to uh, like a, non-accents at all. You know mm-hmm. how most like news people don't have, you can't really tell an accent at all. It's very bland. Right. Went from that. So it was kind of a very hard shift. From one shift. extreme all of a sudden, to another. Yeah, yeah. All of a sudden it went from, <laughs> uh, y- y- it was just bizarre. Right, right. Totally. But more enjoyable. Right. I, I try to do my best to just kind of let it, let it fly at this point. Yeah. But, but there occasionally is some that just bug the crap out of me. Now, have so. you ever had the opposite happen where you keep listening to a book, the book is garbage, but the narrator is so good that you're like, yeah, I'm kind of into it. <laughs> um, I don't think so. <laughs> Not, I, I would imagine that would be tough because if the subject matter isn't good. Right, right. But again, I, I don't know. I mean, if like Sir Patrick Stewart read a book that I probably wasn't into, I'd probably I might listen to like, it Maybe more. listen to it anyway, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, th- yeah, that's pretty fun. Mm-hmm. There's definitely some people I wish would narrate more books. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like this guy. This guy's great. <laughs> yeah. Which guy? <laughs> <laughs> the guy who reads Harry Potter for this one. This guy. <laughs> that guy. These nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Who's nuts? Um, yeah, that is, it is interesting. I mean, it's, um, but whatever. Yeah. I would imagine being a, and I think I we've talked about it, but I remember listening to an episode of This American Life where a, a woman who narrates books, uh, she was on a trip, so she needed to do some work. And so what she does in hotels is she actually uh, locks herself or puts herself in a closet for the noise. And, mm-hmm. and she got locked in a closet in a hotel room. And so since she was recording, it's like 45 minutes of her cracking herself up, not <laughs> believing that she got locked in a hotel room. I would imagine it's a lot of work Uh narrating it must be it must be i I mean mean, i i know that i i think it pays okay but i would imagine it's it's because you have to obviously you're going to take breaks Mm -hmm. and you have to have that same cadence and remember everybody's i i i've oftentimes wondered like i would i would imagine they just don't get a book you get a script right and i'm wondering if they do like all of the one voices at once and all so you remember you know because you'd right. be halfway and it's like oh that person is coming back what did i do for them well i also wonder wonder this before of like um how well do they know the book do they go in needing to know the book because they need to know the punctuation and the inflections mm-hmm. or do they go in and just rely on the director to direct that part of it? Like, so that way you don't know. So you don't put your own personal feelings and interpretations on whatever could, it is. Could be. I also like it when people get r- words wrong mm-hmm. in books. Like right. you can tell that yes. they just never seen or used right. this word. That's how hap- I've, I've, I've heard that before. I, and, and, right. Me. When yeah. I'm listening to it, I'm like, I don't think that's, the right pronunciation of that word. Yeah. But yeah. And some of fine. it, you still know what they're saying. And, and right. if, if somebody used the word, and it's that also way. interesting that no one catches it, like the director or the editor or whatever. I would imagine no one's going to listen to the whole freaking, <laughs> or, just or if by that time when it's done, right. Like what are you going to do? Call them back quality in. Quality control. Yeah. Call them back in for one word. And especially if the flow is so good and you're yeah. like, okay, we need you to read. The, right. I, I, I can't imagine that you would want a I bunch of I can't imagine there's enough f- money in the editing and directing no. that that would be worth like a word here or there. No. If it's like, it has to, it just has to be like 90% on point. <laughs> there is one book. For, I, even for good books. I forget what I, which book it was, but I was listening to it and they were pronouncing the girl's name wrong. Like the one of the, mm-hmm. uh, Oh, it, and I'm like, Oh, I guess that's just how they pronounce it. And like two books into the series, they changed 
pronunciation. So oh. I don't know. Finally, like somebody told the author, or finally the author's fine. Like that's not the freaking name right. of the woman. This is right. Maybe they didn't have the clout to correct it in the beginning. I or don't something. know, but right. it was it was uh, you know it was one of those those names that you know it's in your head you like i thought it was pronounced this way and they're pronouncing another and you're like oh that's weird okay cool well now i know yeah and it, then they're like then it's two like, books no, later no, it's this yeah <laughs> but um yeah. ninja said i believe the narrator and director both read the books first but it might depend yeah i i assume i, I mean who knows i don't know like it, i would I, just say i read it Right. Yeah. <laughs> I would assume that it depends on, again, your deal. And like, again, if you're JK Rowling, you get to probably pick and have a lot of input, I, but. And maybe as the person who's reading the book, you do want to read the book. So you know where it's going. Right. Cause it would be <laughs> really right. awkward if all of a sudden you're like, like, oh. I, like I said, I think that the, the sentence flow, the punctuation, the inflections of the characters, like I would assume that you would need to know that. But if you're not getting paid a lot, maybe you're just getting paid for the weekend and you show up and you read this book a couple times and they do their best. I, I don't know. I do like, uh, I was listening to one book. It was the uh, Jack Reacher book mm-hmm. and there was a whole bunch of people and they were trying to figure this thing out. So a lot of a lot of the characters had like very short lines. So there was a lot of like, he said, she said, he said, he answered. And it, Did it you, felt like it was punched in? Totally. <laughs> yeah. It was like, <laughs> I can't believe we're going to go Come this. On. He said. Better editing. I Come on. No, it's, it sounded fine, but I'm like, that he but said you, sounded exactly right. like the but last But you picked up said. on it, which yeah. means that's not the best editing it because you good. picked up on it. Well, I I picked up that. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I wouldn't well, want. Well, isn't the I best editing the, the one you don't said, notice? Well, I didn't notice that it was edited. He could mm-hmm. have said it that way. Right. It just he, sounded. He says it that way every the, single the time. The whole he said, there was so he much said, excitement going on <laughs> that obviously the he said she said he mm-hmm. answered wasn't at the same right. excitement. So. I, and and in my head, I was thinking, there's no way you could come out of that excitement, right? No, and they then punched go back that into in, it. Totally, but it was just so funny. It's like, I, this isn't the way it's going to work. He said, <laughs> "I'm like, all oh, right, good for you." Right, that's funny. So, anyway, yeah, sorry, we've been good. talking about that for that while. Sorry. Sorry. What else you got? We're almost done. Um, pardon me. I don't really. We we're going to talk about our new TV show and that right. fact that we both have Monday off, which mm-hmm. is awesome. What do you got? You Ken got. Said I used you to have, have to a lot write more notes. For, uh, I used to write sports for news reports because our newsman was lazy. He never read it ahead of time. I may have put things in there to test. That's great. Um, Is it like the anchor man where they no, just, like he'll yeah. just read the prompter? Yes. <laughs> just agree to disagree. <laughs> Fuck you, San Diego. Uh, all right. Well, let's talk about our show real quick, and then we'll go start making. Uh, well, it's early, but we'll start making plans to make dinner. <laughs> <laughs> um, I forget what it's called exactly. The, Vicar of Dibley? Yes. The Dibbles? The Dibbles. Dibble Bibble? The Dibs. <laughs> We're all into the Dibs, you guys. We finished um, Mrs. Mrs. Brown's, Brown's Boys. Boys. Uh, we finished what's available. Mm-hmm. As we've talked about, like repair shop. There's a lot more seasons than repair shop. It's well, just I don't know, we don't. We did see the 2020 version of Mrs. Brown's Boys. Right. But I just meant that. Um, I, I know that they have a whole bunch of live shows and stuff. I'm just mm-hmm. saying we just watch what's available. Mm-hmm. So, um, but they're, um, so we have been looking for a new British show to watch. And then we came up with an old show that's obviously no longer current, but they it have it on Netflix. It was suggested in the little, um, why don't you watch Box. this? Yeah. yeah. Vicar of Dibley, the Dibs. The Dibs. And it's very enjoyable so far. We're already in season three. <laughs> yes. We just cruise through them. We just cruise through. Which but is, it is, it's it a is fun interesting thing to have on in the background while we're doing stuff. Since it's so. 25 years old, there are some cringy parts in there oh, where for you're like, sure. oh, you couldn't for get away with doing that now. You're sure. like, oh, ouch. And and then like I turn to you often and say like, can a vicar do that? Is that allowed? How do I know? Well, I don't I, know, clearly. I mean, yeah. But- but uh, I mean, obviously, it's still a show, so they're gonna right. They have a lot to make of Vickers it wouldn't saucy. act that way. But yeah, Vickers can do a lot of stuff. Yeah. They're freaking crazy, man. <laughs> but it's been fun. Yeah. It is fun watching all these old. I don't know. Like, I don't like old American shows, but I like right. old British shows. I I think because it's a whole. Like I I can't imagine myself in that situation because so much is different. The culture is different. Right. The food is different. The cars are different. The weather is different. That's half the fun. Though. Old U.S. shows, I feel like, oh, it could have, I could have been there. That's not right. fun. No one wants that. Um, our friend Margo from many podcasts um, recently brought up the old American TV show Soap. 
Mm -hmm. And I I remember, I love that show. And I used to watch it with my mom Mm -hmm. all the time. Like I've seen all of, I've seen that whole entire series. And that's a show I think that I, if it was on like Netflix or something, I would totally watch that show again. That was, that was like the original of like the, um, what's it called? Uh, po- uh, modern family. Yeah. And, and it was Billy Crystal Arrested and he was the, the gay son. And then, um, <laughs> Mike said the weather is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> well, true. Well, true. Yeah. Hey Gary, thanks for being here. Um, yeah. So it was funny. I don't know. I'm just saying hi to Gary. God damn God. It. <laughs> anyway. So I really like it. The and dibs. The dibs, the dipster. Um, and I think it's funny that we recognize some of the characters from movies we watched later, like Four Weddings and a Funeral and things like that. Like, I'm like, oh, that's the guy from, and obviously he did that before. Yeah. He read <laughs> Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> did he? Uh, who Maybe. Knows? Who knows? Well, good. Well, that's all. That's too funny. That's all we got. Did- so we're in, we're currently watching the dibs. The dibs. We, should, we, need, we need to get back into the Mandalorian world. We do. We do. So I don't know. Maybe we'll that's. Mandalorian and it And up. We're, we're off tomorrow. So maybe we'll Mandalorian we'll mando, up or something. Mando up. Mando up. Well, thank you, everybody. Catch up. Remember, we have mando to say up, goodbye catch up. to okay. the podcast. So don't run away. Right. Don't Thanks, <laughs> everybody, for listening. <laughs> Throw my headphones down and leave. PrettyFreaks.com. We'll be back uh, next week, more than likely. I hope you all are um, doing okay on this V-Day. And, uh, or know. after, if you're listening. Right. Hope, hope you're uh, after. And uh, if you're not doing okay, I hope that you get some discount chocolate tomorrow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I hope you get some discount chocolate. I hope we get you some discount chocolate. You might not be doing all right, but discount chocolate might make it better. In you. Why not? All right, everybody, bye bye. Take care of you. <laughs>